Hey guys, today I have another watercolor tutorial for you guys. We're going to be painting some really beautiful yellow mushrooms. So, I hope you got your paints ready. I've got my big set here, but we won't be using all that. A cup of clean water, a paper towel, and an assortment of brushes. The first thing I want to do is, I should probably tape this down. So I guess that's the first thing I'll do. Alright, so we've got that taped down. The first thing I'm going to do is I kind of want to preserve the vibrancy of these mushrooms, but I do want to begin toning the background. And that is going to be a little difficult because I don't want to do a mask all over the whole thing. That's just kind of a waste of masking fluid. So I'm just going to have to try and be careful and hope that by doing it this way first, I won't have as many problems. And I'm doing this on Strathmore's 400 series watercolor paper. So first thing I'm doing is I'm doing kind of a streaky wash. trying to allow some of the dry brush to show through. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the color and streak it in. And I also want to use now as an opportunity to mix in some other color. So. I'm grabbing a dark brown, a dark reddish brown in fact, so I'm grabbing some Van Dyke brown. But any dark reddish brown you have access to would probably work. And I'm going to use kind of the smaller point on my brush to just kind of streak some of this in. And I love how we're doing the wet into wet diffusal. I think that's working really well already. And I'll clean that out. And then I'll grab some green gold. And I'm just going to There we go. We're not aiming for photorealism here, mostly just the feel. And, let me see if I can readjust my camera. There we go. While I'm letting this dry, I'm gonna start in on the background, which is going to be, I have to try to work carefully because I'm working around these mushrooms. It's not gonna be perfect, of course. Some in while it's still wet. Get this horizontal tree. And I'm definitely working from reference. I can link the reference for you guys in the description. Well, you can maybe paint along too and then kind of do some broken and then dab in some of the green gold and so far I've pretty much only used this one flat I do have some messiness which is it is what it is. We can hopefully clean that up in a bit.
something I really enjoy about watercoloring from reference is that I find it is really calming and it really helps me kind of relax from things that stress me out or make me sad. It gives me a chance to focus on something I love doing without worrying about having to come up with like the most original topic ever. So I'm mixing kind of a very bright yellow green with a hooker's green. I'm gonna work that in too. And when I'm painting from reference, I don't even necessarily care if it turns into a hot mess. It's nice when it doesn't. It's nice when it looks good. But, you know, a lot to be learned from making a mess and making mistakes. But so far, I'm thinking this is looking pretty good for an abstract background. And I'm going to give all of this a chance to dry. Well, the bottom has had a chance to dry. I'm going to go in and darken some of those colors and kind of reinforce some of that brown. So, so far we've used kind of four colors. We've used a dark brown, so a Van Dyke brown. We've used uh, Windsor and Newton green gold. We've used uh, Daniel Smith undersea green. And then I think I use like a sap green from Windsor and Newton. Oh, and a hooker's green, probably from Holbein. So you guys can count. <laughs> I apparently cannot. And I'm just kind of going in and reinforcing some of the brown on the log. I don't want to like cover up all that beautiful color I've developed, but I do kind of want to tighten it up and glaze it. Reinforce certain areas. I like how gestural the top is. This is really just a study. All right, I'm gonna grab some sepia since it's a darker brown and work that in. Wet into wet here and there. Grab some more undersea green for the bottom. It's kind of very linear, linear right now. And then Finally, some more of that green gold. Kind of brush that in without covering up. Because I don't want to lose my contrast entirely. All right, so let's give this a chance and see what we, in, a chance to dry and see what we end up with. So it has not had a chance to fully dry. I know, I know. We're gonna grab some more of that Van Dyke brown. Maybe mix it in with some green. Start tightening up some of these background This is good practice for me because I don't get to freehand kind of forest scenes very often. So this is a good opportunity to practice doing that. I always want to. Um, I've been hiking in the natural area before, but usually the people I go with don't want to stop every few minutes and let me paint for 30 minutes. So. have to sort of work it in as I can and work from reference as I can. Okay, it's looking a little bit tighter. 
and I need to keep in mind that my focus isn't really the background. My focus is the foreground in those foreground mushrooms. So I'm going to go into those background trees with some sepia. And just try to darken some of them, add some details here and there. And I'm going to do kind of the same on the log. And I'm kind of just freehanding it since this is more of a study than anything else. All right, it doesn't really look too much like a log. Uh, I'm gonna let it dry, and I keep saying that, and then keep coming back to fuss with it. Um, but I'm gonna let it dry and then decide from there. I really don't want to spend a lot of time fidgeting with the background because it's supposed to be kind of a short thing, and I want to spend more time focusing on the mushrooms. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on these mushrooms now. These mushrooms have a lot of yellow and orange to them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of a base coat. And that's okay. Doing the whole little happy accidents thing. I kind of like that bleeding. And I am slapping down a lot of paint on the paper. That's okay. Working a little loose, working a little messy. Hopefully that'll kind of work out some of today's kinks, right? Do some wet into wet with another orange. It's gonna get really dark down there too. Some more wet into wet, and I'm just kind of scribbling it on. There's a stem in the background here, so I'll get that. And then there's one back here, and I'll paint that as well. Just kind of doing a loose study. All right, and give that time to dry. And then I'm going to start grabbing some orange. 
And I'm going to start, I think, while it's still wet, let the paint do some of the work for me. And I can start establishing some of those corrections. This is either going to turn out amazing or horrible. It's okay. It's the kind of night it is. Sometimes we got to have some fail boats tooting on into the harbor. in order to grow and learn. I'm gonna go into the background just a little bit and grab some of the color that's on the mat and kinda dot in some leaves just to add like a little bit of detail. This is always hard for me because it always ends up really muddy. It's okay if it's blending out like that. Let's see where it goes. Now, some of these mushrooms, most of these mushrooms in fact, have kind of a darker stem, so I'm gonna mix up some Payne's Gray with some of the brown from the mat. I'm just gonna start kind of working it in there. Give that a chance to dry as well. All right, so it's had a little bit more time to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my more intense oranges, maybe even a little bit of red. I'm not super happy with how this has been going, but that's okay. I got to play around with trying things out a new way. That's always good. Handling things differently than I normally would also. Always good, right? some visual interest. Maybe it won't be so bad. We'll see. Can I prematurely throw in the towel? But painting's never finished until it's completely finished, right? And that's going to take forever to dry. 
All right, so this has had a little more time to dry. And I'm grabbing a fair amount of red. I'm just kind of working it in over. not quite as nice as I would have liked but they'll do right they're good enough it's an important part I've found of learning how to watercolor is also making peace when it's not quite perfect and that was disappointing because I was really hoping to get a more straightforward tutorial for you guys today and instead it was just a tutorial on dealing with making peace making peace with your painting and being okay with not always producing the best work What would help is getting a little bit tighter than this, which I might be able to do. But you know what? Since we're kind of in failed zone anyway, I'm going to grab some undersea green, hit the bottom of that log. It's amazing that it can just go right over the red and like not even touch it. Like, what is that about? Maybe that'll help a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab some more of that Payne's Gray. And at this point, I'm kinda just noodling around, playing around with things since I'm already not super satisfied with this piece. This isn't a piece I would consider offering for sale, for example. So, might as well just noodle around with it, right? Learn a little bit. Try some things out. It's definitely one of those instances when failure can be your friend because it frees you up to make to experiment and to make mistakes. I think I said a long time ago I wanted to fail more in front of you guys so that I could really help model um, kind of just an openness to making mistakes and an openness to failure. And since this is kind of a bonus tutorial anyway, now's as good a time as any.
heavier than I would have wanted, so maybe we can blend this out since this paper is so wet. And I painted on it so heavily and so muddily that it's gonna like wash at this point. All right, you know what guys? I'm just gonna have to call it finished. It's gonna have to, just have to end it here. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and watching me make a mess. And I wish this had turned out a little bit more productive, but it was fun to paint and it was fun to get some of my frustrations out on paper. And I hope you guys had a great day and I hope you weren't painting along. So bye guys.